we're in the midst of the greatest redistribution of power since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and this is happening because technology has provided a new capability that reaches everyone in every place. It, it, it has no regard for borders. Now, this technology allows these institutions to monitor and record the private activities of people on a scale that's broad enough um, that we can say it's close to all powerful. Uh, and it's through the use of new platforms and algorithms that are built on and around uh, these capabilities uh, that they're able to shift our behavior. In some cases, they're able to predict our decisions and also nudge them to different outcomes. Uh, and they do this by exploiting the human need for belonging. But how many of you who have a Facebook account actually read the terms of service? Right? <laughs> like it's not, it's not anything to be ashamed of. Uh, everything has hundreds and hundreds of pages uh, of legal jargon that we're not qualified uh, to read and assess, and yet they're considered to be binding upon us. And it is through this sort of unholy connection uh, of technology um, and, and sort of an unusual interpretation of, of contract law that these institutions have been able to transform this greatest virtue of humanity, uh, which is this desire to interact and to connect and to cooperate and to share, to transform all of that into a weakness. And now these institutions, which are both commercial and governmental, uh, have built upon that and built upon that, and they have structuralized it and entrenched it to where it has become now the most effective means of social control in the history of our species. When I came forward uh, to reveal the first system of, of global, truly global mass surveillance back in 2013, um, which was being run not just by the United States government, but actually of a group called the Five Eyes. Uh, these are the Anglophone governments, which would be the United States, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. Um, and the revelation of this uh, activity, this, this was a uh, collaboration between corporate and government power uh, and government in the United States, um, they would go to the largest web platforms uh, and they would try to uh, induce them uh, into willful cooperation beyond what the law required and they would get these groups to act as agents of government be able to hand over your entire gmail account everything you've ever typed into facebook clicked on facebook every site you've ever gone to where you're logged into facebook but it just has that like button on the page all of that was recorded and it was poured into a system that didn't just touch internet connections, but it touched phone calls and everything else. But an unusual thing is you would see a traditional adversary like Russia is actually less intensely monitored than the United States itself. Their own documents written by their own lawyers said that the real reason these programs were classified was because they feared a, this is their own words, quote, damaging public debate. And that's about the scale of their activities and that would open them up to legal challenges because they know they had gone far beyond the law. By their own count, they were violating our laws thousands of times a year. I think 2,776 times in a single quarter or calendar year. I, I, I can't recall precisely. 